Hello and welcome to today's lesson on function operations and compositions. This is going to be part one of two videos that cover the topics under standard 2.1b and 2.1c and then that study island lesson that's called function operations and compositions. So before you go and work on those topics, you're going to want to make sure that you um, look at both parts of these videos. Then. Um, so in this first video, we're going to be talking about adding and subtracting and multiplying um, functions. And as we're going through that, make sure that you're taking notes. And if I go too fast, just pause and rewind so you can get caught back up. And you can even pause at the beginning of a question, work the problem out, and then see if you get the same answer as I do. And that way you can get a gauge of how well you're doing. So I'm so glad that you're here. And let's go ahead and look at some problems. Hey, remember that these f of x and g of x, these are just the names, okay? That doesn't have anything to do with multiplication in this instance. And here they're asking us to add that function named f to that function named g. And then after here, it's just giving us some, it's telling us about the domain. It's telling us that x can never equal 9 or 6 because that'll make that this denominator 0. And this denominator here can never equal 9 because it'll make that denominator equal 0. So we can't have these in our domain. So that's all this extra stuff afterwards means. So we're just going to have to add these two fractions. And so remember when you're adding fractions, you're going to need common denominators. So I'm writing down the f of x function. And I'm going to add that to the g of x function. And right off the bat, I see they do not have common de denominators, so I'm going to have to create those. And to do that, I'm going to factor my first denominator here. And that's going to factor to x plus 9 and x plus, or x minus 6. And if you need help to review on factoring, then you're going to want to look at my Algebra 1 video on Standard 1.2c called Factoring Polynomials. So now I'm looking, and this denominator has an x plus 9 and an x minus 6. This one has an x plus 9, but it's missing that x minus 6 part. So that means in order to add that in, I'm going to have to multiply the top and the bottom by x minus 6. So when I do that, I get 1 times x minus 6 is just x minus 6. And then my denominator here is that x plus 9, x minus 6. And then I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this fraction. The top stays the same. And I'm going to write that denominator as the, fra as the factored form. And now my denominators are the same, so I can just go ahead and add the top. So I'm going to have, on the top of that, I'm going to have x minus 21 plus x minus 6 all over that same denominator, x plus 9 times x minus 6. And so then I'm going to combine like terms on the top. x plus x is 2x, and then negative 21 minus 6 is negative 27. And then I still have that factored form on the bottom, x plus 9, x minus 6. And so I can't combine anything else. There's nothing that I can cancel. However, when I'm looking at my answers, the denominator isn't in factored form. It's in standard form. So when you FOIL this back out, you're going to get that x squared plus 3x minus 54. And then your top here stays the same, 2x minus 27. And that's going to be your final answer, which is letter B. Right, so here they're telling us that function f is 6x squared plus 8. And function g is 3x minus 3. And if we, you can just understand what this symbol is symbols mean? And this is a fairly easy problem to solve. So here all it is is telling you is you're going to add these two functions and then you're going to tell me what that is at negative 
evaluated at negative one. So there's actually two ways you could do this. You could evaluate this f function at negative one and the g function at negative one and then add those two answers. Or you could add them first and then evaluate. Either way will get you the correct answer. So this time here I'm going to evaluate first. So and remember, anytime you substitute in a number, you're going to want to put that number in parentheses. And so I evaluate the f of x function for negative 1. And now, and now I'm going to evaluate the g of x function for negative 1. So it's going to be 3, and then instead of writing x, I'm going to write a negative 1 minus 3. And then here, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. And then I have 6 times 1 is 6. And then I have 6 plus 8 is 14. And then over here, I have negative 6 times negative 1 is negative 3. Minus 3 is negative 6. And if I remember back here from my problem, it's telling us I need to add those two answers. So here, 14 plus negative 6 is positive 8. And so that makes my final answer D. This question here gives us two functions, an f of x function and a g of x function. And it's asking is, if you add those two functions together, what is that graph going to look like? So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually work that out and add... 2x plus 1, that's my f of x function, plus the g of x function. And so then I combine like terms here, 2x and 3x, I'm sorry, 2x and x is 3x. And 1 and minus 1 is 0, so those cancel out, so I just have 3x. So here, if I were to graph y equals 3x, what would that look like? Well, I don't have a y-intercept because there's nothing added or subtracted by itself. So that means it's going to start at the origin 0, 0. And then my slope here is the number in front of x is 3. So that means I'm going to go up 3 into the right 1, which is right here. And so that's going to make the line of my addition answer C. So my final answer is A. Okay, now this problem gives us the two functions called f of x and g of x. But now they're asking us to subtract them. So I went ahead and wrote that out. And so I took the f of x minus the g of x. And I use parentheses as a reminder that when I'm subtracting, that subtraction is going to change the sign in every term of the second function. So I'm going to want to rewrite that without parentheses. So that first part stays the same because it's not after the subtraction symbol. But then everything in parentheses is going to change signs. So now it's a plus 2x squared, a minus 3x, and a plus 1. And now I just combine like terms once I have the parentheses. So there's only one x to the fifth, so that's just gonna I'm just gonna write six x to the fifth. Okay, and then I have x to the fourth and an x to the fourth here. Seven minus three is four, so it's a plus four x to the fourth. And then my next term down is x to the second. I have a seven x to the second and a two x to the seventh. So when I add those, I get a 9x to the second. Okay, next I have a 3x and a minus 3x. Well, those just cancel, so I don't write anything because they equal to 0. And then I just have this plus 1 left over that I'm going to write at the end. And that's my final answer. I don't have anything left to combine or simplify, so my final answer is B. Okay, so once again, it's telling me that I have a function f of x and another one called g of x, and it wants me to subtract them, 
and then evaluate at negative 2. So remember, I just need to know what the symbolism means, and it's fairly easy. So you can evaluate first and then subtract or subtract and then evaluate. I'm going to go ahead and evaluate first. So I'm going to have 3 times negative 2 cubed plus 19. And then g of x is negative 2 minus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Three times negative eight is negative twenty-four plus nineteen is gonna be negative five. And then over here negative four minus two is negative four. And then these they told us we're gonna subtract those two answers. So negative five minus a negative four is negative one, which is letter B. Here they've asked us to multiply our two functions that we're given. So I'm definitely going to use parentheses around those when I write out the problem to show the multiplication. And this is actually going to be a FOIL problem. So I'm going to take my first terms times each other. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. And then 3x times 5 is minus 15x. And then minus 3 times 3x is minus 9x. And then minus 3 times minus 5 is fif positive 15 or plus 15. And then I need to combine my like terms. So negative 15x minus 9x is negative 24x. And then I still have my 9x squared at the beginning and my plus 15 at the end. And I don't have anything else to simplify or to combine. So this is going to be my final answer, which is letter A. Okay, this problem here, they're asking us to multiply them, but then evaluate that answer at negative 2. So once again, you can do this in any order. You can multiply them first and then evaluate, or you could evaluate each one of these and then multiply your answers. For this one, I'm going to show you how to multiply first and then evaluate. So if we're going to multiply these first, you're going to take x cubed times 5x minus 9. So that means I'm going to have to distribute that x cubed. And so 5x times x cubed is 5x to the fourth. And then 9 or minus 9 times the x cubed is n minus 9x cubed. And so now I'm going to evaluate that answer at negative 4, so that means negative 2. That means I'm going to substitute it in negative 2 anywhere there's an x, and I'm going to make sure to use parentheses around that negative 2. And so negative 2 to the 4th, that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, and that's going to be positive 16. And then I do negative 2 to the third, that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, that's negative 8. And then 5 times 16 is 80. And then a minus 9 times negative 8 is a positive 72, so that's going to be a plus 72. And then when I add those two numbers together, I get a positive 152, which is answer choice A. In this question here, they're asking us to multiply f times g, but then instead of giving us the answer in equation form, they're asking us to identify which line that equation represents. So here we're going to take 4 times x plus 1 fourth as our first step is actually multiplying those two functions. I'm going to have to distribute that 4. 4 times x is 4x, and then 4 times 1 fourth is 1. So now I'm looking for which graph over here represents this function 4x plus 1. Well, remember that this number here by itself, that is the y-intercept number. And then this number in front of x is your slope number, so rise over run. So first I'm going to look for which graph intercepts the y-axis at positive 1. 
Well, there's only one there that's line D, but let's just double check that the slope is right just in case we made a mistake. Our slope here is 4 over 1, so that means we're going to rise up 4 and then run 1. And there is a, that is the slope of the line D, so that's definitely our answer, which is answer choice A. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.